Hello, my name is Tajane, and the co-speakers of this video is Abraham and Deshaun, and we are more delighted to recap things about ecology. If this is your first lesson, then we are more than excited to teach you some things about ecology. The first question you should ask yourself is, what is ecology, and why is ecology so important? Well, let's first break down the word ecology. The prefix echo means environment, habitat, or surrounding. The suffix ology means the study of. So what is ecology? Ecology is the study of abiotic and biotic factors interacting in their environment. What is ecology? Ecology is the study of interactions amongst the organisms and their environment. We have many topics to discuss, but before we can get into those topics, let's go over the importance of ecology and present our first essential question. Our first essential question is why is ecology important? Ecology is important because it shows us the present condition of our environment and how we can manipulate the good and the bad factors to benefit us. Our next topic is interactions and interdependence. This topic also involves our second essential question, how do animals interact in a given environment? Interaction and interdependence focuses on how biotic and abiotic factors need and depend on each other. An example of that need and dependence is an organism's niche. A niche is an organism's place or role in its ecosystem. If an organism were to be placed in an unfamiliar or poorly compatible environment, they would either have to adapt or they would die. Levels of organization is our next topic, individual. This is the first level. It is simply one organism, population. This is the second level, and it is the family of the individual, community. This is the third level, and it involves all of the living things in the area. Ecosystem. This is the fourth level, and it involves all the living things and non-living things in an area. Biome. This is the fifth level, and it is all the abiotic and biotic factors in a distinct region. The last level is the biosphere. This is simply the entire world. Our next topic is ecological methods. These are three methods to study how organisms interact in their environment. Observations are an important part of ecology because you can get first rate information on what you are studying by physically being there and taking notes that can be a, can be used as a primary resource for other scientists. Experimentation can be a daring way to study organisms in an environment because the experiments you conduct on the potentially harmful and sometimes worthless when dealing with the with rare or near extinct organisms. Modeling is the safest way to study organisms but not the most informative when conducting a small simulation of how an organism <coughs> is supposed to act in a particular environment and situation. Our next topic is feeding relationships. Feeding relationships are the relationships between producers and consumers. The meiosis is a relationship in which dissimilar organisms live together and interact. Mutualism is when two organisms of different species exist in a relationship in which each individual benefits. Commensalism is a relationship between two organisms where one organism benefits without affecting the other. Immensalism is when the inv individuals of one species adversely affect those of the other and are unaffected themselves. Parasitism is when one organism lives off another organism and the other organism is harmed. These relationships can be shown in food chains and food webs. Our next topic is food chains and food webs. This topic also involves our final assistive question. Food chains and food webs are good ways to show the transfers of energy through an ecosystem. <clears throat> the steps of a food chain and food webs are called trophic levels. For example, the producer would make the first level the primary consumer would make the second level, and the secondary consumer would make the third level. The tertiary consumer would make the fourth level. Of course, there are many more organisms and many more trophic levels in the food chain and the food web. The transfer, of the transfer of energy through levels is governed by the 10% rule. 
This rule means that only 10% of energies are available in one trophic level that are passed to one organism to the next trophic level. Our next Our next topic is the cycles of matter. We are going to take about three of the cycles of matter. <clears throat> Our first cycle is the water cycle. The water cycle is simply involves all of the ev evaporation from water into gas and rises into the atmosphere and begins to condensate, forming clouds. The clouds fill with water, within, then gravity eventually causes precipitation. Precipitation can be a solid or a liquid, like rain, sea, or snow. The next precipitation that flows all of through the streets and downhills is called runoff water. And the water that steeps into the ground is called groundwater. Our next cycle is called the carbon cycle. This cycle shows the movement of carbon between abiotic and biotic factors in the environment. The final cycle is called the nitrogen cycle. This cycle shows the movement of nitrogen between abiotic and biotic factors within the environment. No information, no internet information was used in this paper slide video. All, all information came from a North Carolina apprentice, Paul biology textbook, and our biology teacher, Ms. Garrison. Script writer, Abraham, Abraham H. Narr <laughs> narrator, Tajane W. Deshaun F. And Abraham H. Videography Dominique M. Thank you for watching.